For more content like this, for more content like this, log on to GibboPresents.com. It's Gibbo, and right now I'm once again joined by the Prime Minister of Miami. It is Major Laser and Black Chinese very own Walshi <coughs> Fire. Walshi, how are you? I'm good, my brother. How are you? I'm good, thank you. Mm. It's time again for us to catch up and chat about everything that's taken place in the Sound Clash world over the last six months, and a lot has happened so far in 2015 but i feel we have to start with the return of the sound you are a member of mm -hmm. black chinese yeah. it has to be said you weren't in attendance for warner eastern berlin but i know you've seen the video listened to the mm -hmm. audio and no doubt spoke with the rest of the team so give me your analysis on what took place that night in germany man it's funny how time flies and you you forget so much, but um, you know what? I think that that night in Germany um, was an interesting night. When you look at the audio, I'm sorry, when you look at the video and you, and you listen to the audio, it actually does seem like the clash could have gone either way. And I think some people were going to be like, yo, it was very biased towards uh, either the black Chinese, sorry, the, 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 the jugglers fans or the jugglers haters which is you know i think something that every sound man experiences in their hometown or in their home state which is the out of town guy you know just automatically gets more love overall it was a good clash man and you know i i think uh i think one-on-one -on -one clashes is not something uh black chinese should do right now uh it takes a lot of work it takes a lot of money it takes a lot of effort to play an hour round, hour round, half hour round, half hour round, and then 15, 15, you know, and then go into whatever you go into next. To keep that level of energy high, like they did the first round throughout the entire clash, costs a lot of money. And uh, it takes a lot of time. You literally have to lock yourself in a studio for like four months. So uh, I think that would be the lesson, the lesson learned is to, is to kind of just pace that clash thing. But you know, Bobby, love it, man. Bobby, love it. So you're going to see Bobby in the arena soon, you know. It's not a question. Um, it was a great thing for Sound Clash and a great thing for, for Black Chinese, man, because trust me, I think, uh, you know, underneath everybody's uh, appearance as the juggling zone and the remix zone, all four of us, you know, five of us, six, seven, sorry, big up all the selectors, uh, love Sound Clash. Love it. So, you know, we definitely want to participate in some, on some level. A few weeks later, Black Chinese teamed up with Tech 9 to take on Super Fresh and Outcasts in Toronto. Again, you weren't there for this clash. Where do you think things went wrong for Team USA in this one? Yo, that one that looked like it did go wrong from start. You know, like, big man thing, I don't agree with I don't agree with taking back-to-back -back clashes like that. It's, it takes so much work to prepare for one. And I'm not, I'm not saying have a six-month gap in between them, but you want to win, you know? And so if you're doing so much for one clash, and you know that clash is going to get a lot of media, a lot of publicity, you know, a lot of people are going to download the audio and see the videos. You shouldn't take the next clash in a, in a month um, after that. So I think that's where everything went wrong. I think it was an impossible way um, to take a clash so soon, you know, and, to, and, to, and to, to still be talking about the last clash as you're entering the next clash. Like, I don't think you understand what that is, you know. Like I said, I always relate everything to numbers in sports. You know, imagine your biggest boxing match and then you have a next big boxing match. <clears throat> A month later, <clears throat> and people are still talking about the last one. <clears throat> you can't get your mind right on the next one. So for me, I think that's exactly where uh, the world thing go around. Big up my, my 70s cup. You know, sometimes you just have to keep it. Is it me? Yeah, classic, you know? <laughs> Cups come straight from yard in the 70s. That one, yeah, bad. Yeah. Um, but like I said, big up to uh, the, the Toronto sounds. Outcast is one of my favorite sounds. 
them are one of the baddest. Um, and who else was it? Was it Stepper Choice? Who else was it? Super no, Fresh. Super, sorry, Super Fresh. And you know me love Super Fresh from long time. Original sound from the old selector, you know? We, one, clearly one of the biggest and baddest North American sounds. I'm big up Earth Ruler. I'm, I definitely meant to come to that dance on Saturday with um, Earth Ruler, uh, Fresh and Kilimanjaro. Um, but I literally, boy, that story that long. All I can say is car accident, you know, but it's a long story. Um, <clears throat> but uh, I was in New York Saturday and I definitely wanted to come and attend that. Uh, but overall, those are two wicked sounds. You cannot sleep on any of those sounds. And of course, Tech Nine, I bought sound too. But Outcast, I really love how they have done what I think like a Magash has done as far as step away from sounding like, voicing like, being like other people and just being themselves. They're my Guyanese, they're my Indian descendants, and they own that. You know, they cut tunes just like how Black Chinese would. You know, where you say something like, you would, have, you would advise a song and it say, you know, you bust your gun, and then we would advise a song and say, we use with nunchucks. You see me? It's like, it's like, it's like refreshing because you know that you sat down with that artist and said, yo, I'm Guyanese and I'm Indian. So yeah, I said a song like this. And if nobody else gets it, at least the Guyanese people will and at least the Indian people will. And they'll be good fans and, and follow. I mean, personally, I love that. I love that kind of stuff. And like I said, I think them and my gosh do that very well. You know, they own that. Hey, we're, 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 we're different. So we're going to voice. We're not, we're not Jamaicans. So in the Sound Clash Arena, we have a vice and cater it to who we are. And that's what I think makes them two sounds great. Earlier this year, there was a big debate, debate even among Sound Clash fans and sounds as to what is a fair price for sounds to charge when it comes to clashing. The figure of 10,000 US dollars was mentioned as a price that some top tier sounds are asking for. Is this a fair price in your opinion? And if it's not, what is? We can't tell no man what for charging. And I don't know what a fair price is, to be honest with you. I think, uh, you know, most sounds charge around the three grand. So if a sound charges 10 grand, they know their worth and they know that they can uh, sell tickets. And you can't be mad at that. Numbers always gonna win. So if you feel like your sound is worth 10 grand, uh, then you should know also that your sound is able to move uh, people to the venue. If that's not the case, then I don't think you'll get booked. You know, Keep your price though, keep your price at 10 grand. But it's gonna be very difficult for anybody to book you and make sense of it, you know? So for the sounds that do that, I don't know who exactly you're talking about, but any sound that does do that, they know they can, they, they, they should be able to be able uh, to know that they're going to ram a venue. They should be able to know that the clash that they're taking on is going to be interesting. Uh, and, you know, I, I follow battle rap real heavy and the, the top battle rap guys do the same thing. You know, uh, they charge because they know they're going to get um, tickets sold. So nothing no wrong. Me not care. In my opinion, as long as the, as long as that place around and the promoter can look at himself at the end of the night and say, "Yo, I spent ten grand on that sound there and ten grand on that sound. That was ten. That was twenty grand in the hole right there." But guess what? I got five thousand people to come out. Makes sense, you know. So it doesn't trouble me at all. You're a busy man. You're traveling a lot, but I know you try and keep up to date with the Sound Clash audio that goes online. Out of all the audios you've heard from the first six months of 2015, is there one which sticks in your minds or which you enjoyed yeah. the most? Soul Supreme, my gosh. And I will say this, last year I think I said Soul Supreme Blunt. Uh, Might have been my favorite Clash of last year. Soul Supreme right now is just a monster. Like, they cut everything. And for me, listening to audio, that is that is just it's just the best audio you can listen to they innovate like last time I, last year i think they did first voice the um 
on that on that Usher uh, on that Usher beat. I can't remember it, man. But eventually, it came out as a forty-five, and all those songs eventually came out. But they were the first, and them never really getting no forward like that. But you had to sit in the crowd and go, you know what? That's a cobra that I never heard before, and it bought, and that's what I paid my money for, not to hear the same stuff that I know. To actually, to actually sit back and say, yo, that's the that, this sound is investing in, uh, in 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 their patrons. This sound is invested in their followers. The sound is invested in the haters because even the haters got to say, yo, that's so net. Them cut everything. So the sound, the Soul Supreme, they're investing in the people. They're investing in Sound Clash fans. And they're receiving the rewards. They're winning clashes. I think they've won the two biggest clashes so far this year, right? Uh, Magasha and, and, uh, and Young Hawk, too. maybe not the two biggest, but definitely uh, the two biggest heavyweight one on one clashes. Everybody wanted to see Young Hawk on, on Soul Supreme. And my gosh, on Soul Supreme was also a good clash that I think was very well attended. So, um, to me, they're the number one sound right now. And that audio, my gosh, also played extremely well. And like I said earlier, one of my favorite sounds, that audio right there stands out as the best audio so far. Recently, Taurus Riley made an announcement stating that he was sick of hearing fake and sound like dubs. Therefore, he wasn't going to be voicing any more dub plates. What do you make of his decision? And do you think more artists may follow in his footsteps? Um, you know what? I think it's a good. I think it's a good decision. Just because it, it you just need a break sometime. You can't just vice straight through. You can't just you know, put out a 45 every day. You can't juggle every night. You need a break. You do need a break. Um, and if he's doing it because people are splicing his songs and he want to figure out, oh, if he fix up that part there, that's a great idea. Not mad at that at all. And what was, the, what was the second part of the question? Do you think more artists may follow in his footsteps and take the same path of action? Um, I have no clue. But it's not a bad idea. You know, it's not a bad idea to take a break and to analyze what's happening um, with the dub plates, if they're getting spliced and, and, and you want to control that. Yeah, you just can continue vice and get them more material for splice. So, uh, you know, he just did some dubs for me the other day, but, you know, I have a song with him out now. So, you know, we have a working relationship. And to everybody out there, um, the next Major Lazer single is going to be Taurus Riley featuring Ellie Golden. And the song is called Powerful. And so all the selectors out there who do juggling dances as well as clashes, um, definitely give that song some attention. I think it's going to be one of the biggest songs I've ever, 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 ever in my life been a part of. And Lean On was huge. It's huge. You know, as it being one of the biggest songs of the summer, if not the biggest song of the summer. Um, but for everybody out there that did get Pieces of Mission album, it was number one on the Billboard. And uh, I appreciate you guys so much. Uh, but the next single is going to be Taurus Riley. And so for all Song Clash fan and for all Juggling Sound and for all, you know, Song Clash select, I really want to give that song there um, some feature because I think it's going to be, I think it's going to be a, 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 a timeless song. So Taurus Riley, I'm a general and I'm Kiango Ram. So I'm soon vice up again because you can see that he love it. He love it. He love it a lot. He love it a lot. Like when him vice it up them, if I play them for you right now, he's laughing. Yo, he loves it. So you know he misses it. So trust me, him soon start vice again. Another artist, I Octane, made a decision this year to get involved more closely with the Clash world by introducing the Octane Cup Clash, a Sound Clash series or tournament, if you like, which has been staged in New York and Toronto. In your opinion, should more artists get involved with the Clash scene and actual events like this? Do you think it could benefit both the artists and the scene? Of course. This, this is a, it's a great idea. I mean, of course, Octane's not the first. Um, you know, several artists have been um, a part of Clashes and putting on Clashes. Beanie Man, all, all kind of artists have done it before in the history of Clash. But having more do it always good you know it's a great look it's a great look because you have some people that may not really be into clashes but they are an octane fan 
And so when High Octane say he's in New York City and he's doing a clash, they'll come out and then they'll be entertained. And then they'll be like, wow, this was really fun. I want to do this again. So, you know, all of your favorite artists, if they did something like this, it definitely would add more to it. So, yeah, man, 100% support that. There's plenty of clashes on deck for the remainder of this year, but one which sticks out to me is the 10th staging of the annual 123 Baladan clash in Switzerland, which sees King Addis facing off with Supersonic one on one. Give me a quick prediction for this one. How do you see things playing out? Where okay, I, it really does matter on what side of Switzerland this is. If it's on the French or the Italian side, um, I just don't see it being that good of a clash uh, in general. Just because there's just something about that language barrier. Um, French and Italian clashes just aren't as strong as a German clash. The Germans, um, they speak English uh, extremely fluently. And uh, that allows them to understand a lot of the dance hall uh, songs as well as what the selectors are saying. So, you know, the German, if it's on the German, if it is the German side, uh, it's a strong clash. And it's going to, I would say, uh, Supersonic um, would win. If it's on the French or Italian side, any song could win. I'll, I'll say Supersonic, though, if, if you wanted to get a prediction. You know, are you looking up where it is? Is that? <laughs> I'm trying to, yes. <laughs> I know the name of the town or city is, I believe I pronounced it right, Biel, B-I-E-L. Um, uh, just trying to see which uh, part of Switzerland uh, yeah, it's in. And you know, most of the Jamaicans live on the German side, which is really crazy because any selector can tell you out there, if you play a dance in Zurich, I'll be a yard, I'll come on. Um, I'm big up to Chucky Sirius and all the Jamaicans that live on the French side as well of Switzerland. Got enough yard, my daddy too. Um, but I do believe uh, that does matter. What side? What? 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 What, uh, what language will the crowd be speaking? So. Well, I can tell way. you, according yeah, to. Either way, that's a super sign if you get answer. According to Wikipedia, it's on the language boundary between the French-speaking and German-speaking parts of Switzerland, and is throughout bilingual. Well, should be a great clash. Then. That's actually dope. You know, it's like it's like playing in a uh, Luzon, you know, where you get all three languages um, in, in, in one city and like all three signs on the street in, in different languages. Um, so that's going to be dope. But I'll say super sign. Lastly, before I let you go, I know you've got a couple of topics you want to touch on and address. Firstly, recent loss to the sound system community in Florida. Yeah. So I definitely wanted to say rest in peace and uh much, 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 much blessings to the family and fans of uh, Junior Flex. Junior Flex used to play Innocent Sound. A lot of people don't know that. Um, but if you're in South Florida or just in the juggling world, you should know Junior Flex. His sound was called Mega Flex. He then changed his name to Rico Suave. But either way, he was one of the most entertaining people you could ever see on sound. As well as he terrorized Innocent Sound. And I'm going to say he kind of terrorized Black Chinese Sound too. He was insane you know he was insane like mentally the man he didn't care you know like innocent used to have a dance called fire mondays he would come into fire mondays stand in front of juxi and innocent when they might juggle and heckle them like plain sight not hiding yo i came here tonight I paid at the door to come in here to heckle you two and i mean Nasheen would just, you can see it in his face, he would just be so annoyed. He'd just be like, yo, you know? And just be like, yo, move up. You're like, what do you, like every week, God never used to miss Fire Mondays, man. That was the most fun. And it was like in the Carroll City area, so it was right up the street from my house. Um, and same thing with Black Chinese. Anywhere MC Black Chinese play, him just, and he heckles you. He literally stands behind it and just heckles you. Bobby Chin, ya pussy. Oh, what that? Willie Chin, how can I mix that? Why should I speak it? Wrong it, wrong. And you just, he's just literally heckling you the whole night because he just wants to clash you. He, he just wants to clash you. And he literally sit there, you know, and he had a, he had a, he had a, he had an underground station, man. And 
he added a lot to the community. So I definitely wanted to make sure I mentioned um, him. Uh, and also, man, big up to Nasheen too, you know, car. Nasheen doing his own thing now. Uh, and I, I don't know the full story of, of, of what happened. Cause Innocent is, of course, one of the greatest sounds um, to come out of America. Um, I'm big up to, to the whole Innocent squad. I know all of them guys for a long time. But I will say I do, I do know Nasheen first. Uh, me and Nasheen clashed in 1994 or 5, something like that. Um, I was playing a song called Changes, and he was playing a song called Capricorn. Uh, and that's the first time I met him. And um, we clashed back then. So I'm going to kill him easily, you know? So I've, I've always had a high regard and respect for Nasheen, man. And, and, and Dapper Lee has also been a, a, a great uh, selector throughout the years, playing Universal and uh, all, all, all the sounds. Chris Stella, I think he's a big couple. Another sound, too. Um, and of course, Taylor, you know, big money in the business. Big up to the whole sound, man. Um, Juxi and I went to high school together. So, you know, these are these are real friends. It's not no local. These are real friends. So I know for a fact they all support Nasheen and what he's doing. And I support what he's doing. And um, I don't know if he wants to enter back into the jug, into the uh, Clash Arena. But I do know um, he would be something that people would be very scared of uh, if he did. So big him up. Nasheen, just make your money right now. One of those circle. Uh, I don't remember what else I wanted to talk about. I believe you wanted to touch on Silverhawk. Yeah, of course. If anybody knows me from dancehallminded.com days and, you know, the early days of dancehallreggae.com and all the websites, everybody knows that my favorite sound in the world is Silverhawk. My favorite sound in America is LP. Um, and my favorite sound from Jamaica back then, of course, is Travelers. And, you know, we're not too seated again like that. But big up Travelers too. But Silverhawk being back on the road, man, I, I think, you know, it's always been that, like, up and down shakiness where it was like, man, I, I don't know how I feel about this. But I do believe the last set of dances that they did in the UK were good. You know, a good look. They felt right. And that's what I want to see more of as a Silverhawk fan. So, you know, to, 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 to Richie, um, you know, Cleavy, um, uh, Pepper, um, you know, the whole crew, keep doing this, please. Keep doing the juggling dances that kind of teeter on, will a clash happen, you know? And let's, and, let's, and let's all get to the dance and hope and wonder. And you guys will already know you've set up a thing where you're going to do a little tune for tune at the end. But I do believe, like, that's the way to go right now. And build up a fan base. Have people be like, yeah, I really love how this sound presents himself and presents music. And build up a fan base again, and then full on enter the clash uh, uh, scene, but make it a, a big clash, you know. Um, and then from there, do your wonder. But I think this is the best way to go: was to do these. Are they going to clash juggling dances? And I do believe that uh, they were well attended. So we got my favorite song in the world, Silver Hop. Real talk. Well, she as always. Thank you for taking time to chat clash. We'll speak again in six months' time, if not before. Yeah, man. And um, also, look out for uh, my next single, my own personal stuff, me and Salvatore Ganacci. The song is called Shh, Don't Tell Nobody. Big up to everybody in Sweden. Um, it's a wonderful thing to be able to put out singles, and, you know, that's going to be like my first dance song. I also have a one-drop rhythm where I'm going to drop called Confessions. Soon drop, trust me. Very, very soon. Also, log on to my SoundCloud, Walshy Fire, and uh, get that Kenyatta Fire mix CD. It's bad. It bad. It bad. It bad. Um, as you know, I always try to bring out an artist that nobody's ever heard before, and Kenya out of fire, right up there with Chronics and Jesse Royal and Sons of Dub. So look out for that. Go get that right now. It's up on my SoundCloud, as well as uh, much manas to Midnight. You already know, man. Everybody's, you know, favorite group. Sixty albums, I think, deep. You know, always keep uh, Vaughn and everybody in your mind. Um, uh, the whole Midnight Camp, definitely keep the energy high and positive. You know, Vaughn, bless up every time, man. Um, as well as Machette, uh, another group I'm, look, I'm I'm working with from out of the D.C. area. Believe me, enough, 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 enough good music are forward, you know? We're not around for the business, so. I'm big up to all the Major Lazer fans, man. Much respect on manners. We're not around for that year, you all You see me? So, give up. Big up yourself, food boy. 
Gibbo presents. presents.